Next up on Chemistry 2 is entitled Construction Materials. This topic is about knowing what the raw materials are that we use for building materials and being able to compare the hardness of them, knowing how to make cement, and then there is a chemical equation that we need to learn for this one as well. So let's start with the materials that we get from rocks. Most construction materials come from rocks. So for instance, iron and aluminium are extracted from their ores. So that's one of the key words we need to know is ores and link that to iron and aluminium. Brick is made from clay, which also comes from the earth. Glass, concrete and cement are made from sand. And then limestone, marble, granite and aggregates are different types of rock that are extracted from the earth and are just sort of changed, tidied, prettied up. We change the shape of them to use them. So we just need to be able to link the building material to its raw material. Then we need to make some comment on hardness so we can figure out which of two rocks is harder by rubbing them together. The one that crumbles is the less hard rock. Simple as that, really. For the foundation, you need to know that granite is harder than marble, which is harder than limestone. For the higher paper, we need to know that limestone is a sedimentary rock, which basically means it's made up of layers, most likely of um, fossilised animals or plants. And the sediments can be squashed together, which is what makes it soft. Marble is a metamorphic rock. So that's uh, originally it was made from limestone, which has then been heated up because it's got near the, the core of the earth and it's just changed its structure. And it's harder than limestone because it's been baked, a bit like when you put um, clay in the kiln that gets harder afterwards. And finally, granite is an igneous rock, so it's made up of lots of interlocking crystals, just like the ones we talked about in unit A from the volcanic rock. And because it's got interlocking crystals, it's really quite hard. So this is the bit with the equation that we need to learn. Both limestone and marble are mostly made up of calcium carbonate. So this is the chemical equation for calcium carbonate here, CaCO3. When you heat calcium carbonate, it breaks down into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So you need to know both the word equation and the symbol equation. So you need to know that it's calcium carbonate goes to calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide. So this one here is the word equation. And then you also need to know the symbol equation. CaCO3 goes to CaO plus CO2. Now for the foundation, you need to just be able to remember and regurgitate this. For the higher, they might ask you to balance it but it's not a hard one to balance because I've got to have the same number of each of these molecules. So if I had two lots of calcium carbonate, that would make two lots of calcium oxide, which would make two lots of carbon dioxide. Now this reaction where we heat it and it breaks down into other things is called thermal decomposition. And I've just given you a picture of how we could do it in the lab if we, would, if we chose to. So test tube, we've got our carbonate inside it, heat it up and then off it comes into a delivery tube and it'll go into lime water and I'm sure you can all tell me what will happen to the lime water. It's a test for one of the products that we make. And I'm not going to tell you the answer, you can tell me in class because you should know it by now because we've done it so many times. Right, next up, cement and concrete. So cement is made when limestone is heated with clay and concrete is made by mixing cement, sand and small stones with water. Then we have reinforced concrete and this is what we call a composite material. So basically it's concrete with steel rods or meshes through it that make it stronger. And composite materials are ones that contain at least two materials that can still be distinguished. So if you looked at reinforced concrete, you could see the concrete and you could see the steel rods in it. So even though they're sort of combined, you can still see the individual components and that's what makes it a composite material. For the higher, we need to know a little bit more about reinforced concrete. We need to know that concrete is hard under compression forces, so squeezing them, but it's weaker under tension, so pulling forces. 
and if a heavy load is put on a concrete beam it can cause it to bend and when it bends this causes there to be tension forces which it's weak to which can form cracks. Now the steel is flexible and more importantly it's strong under tension. So the steel rods go inside the concrete to stop the stretching, to stop the tension forces being on the concrete and to just make it stronger. Okay, last little bit. All these things we've said involve digging stuff out the ground. And if we dig stuff out the ground from mines or quarries, it's going to have an impact on the environment. Now, most quarry companies try to reduce their impact um, because they can be pretty big. So they often have to build new roads. There can be a lot of dust released into the land. It can be very noisy and people don't like it. So it's kind of in the company's best interest to not make it you know, too obvious that there is a quarry there or that there has been a quarry there. So after quarries get shut down, they often get covered up and rebuilt over and restored to look nice after they're done with them. And this is a way of reducing the environmental impact. And that is it for topic B, two nice short ones to start us off. Remember, if you've got any questions, do not hesitate to ask me.